I've waited a really, really long time to add this one to the collection. If you know anything about Hot Wheels and their Chevy Silverado or the Chevelle, these two are quite hard to get. This is a Toys R Us exclusive. And really happy to add it to the collection finally. Hello YouTube and welcome Diecast family. As you can see from the short, from the beginning of the video, that uh, finally, finally after at least eight years of trying to get this casting or this variation i finally finally got the toys r us exclusive thanks to my buddy if you know anything this is really hard to get really hard to come by uh if you do i they're usually like 85 bucks but he gave me a pretty good deal on this one the card, it was creased, so uh, he's mainly a carded collector. So on the second-hand market, I don't know what a crease one goes for. I don't know what a loose one goes for, but I'm assuming it goes for more than what uh, the deal I got on it. So extremely, extremely happy to finally add that one to the collection. Finally cross it off the list. Although I still need another loose variation of it somehow so I can make a lifted variation of it. But yes, that's ultimately my goal. Probably I'll have a lifted variation of every one except for... Oh, any of the ones from the Hot Wheels uh, conventions. I don't really go after them ones. And probably the Super Treasure Hunt. Probably not going to lift it. But I'm definitely going to lift this one from the Legends Tour. Picked up a second one off of eBay just to lift it. But I haven't got around to it yet. And, uh... Man, it's a shame that this has orange windows. That's a bummer. But it kind of matches, and I'm not really hating it like I normally would. I don't know, probably because it matches orange striping. But anyways, on this Truck and Stuff Thursday, I have a, another one that I've been waiting on for a really long time. And it's going to be the Kato House Mini GT. And they probably started selling this on pre-order on eBay probably like a year ago. I don't know if this was a late release, if they released it really late or a lot later than what they were expecting to. But And what's this uh, slash slash... 066 is that uh how many releases Cato has had through many GT already 66 releases if so that's freaking nuts he's only been making cars for many GT for a year or two now I think this is the second year so I did not get this off a of pre-order I just kept watching it and I'm glad I did not buy it off a of pre-order uh, I just waited until it finally went on sale and was able to pick one up. But uh, I bought two green light off a of pre order. And I think they were like the Impalas, like the Lowriders. And I never got them. So you always get really nice packaging with Mini GT. I really like this uh, box it comes in, pretty cool. Of course, I'm 
don't store my mini GTs in a box, so it will not get stored in a box, but it's cool you have it. Of course, with any of the Kato House mini GTs, uh, all right, the tailgate comes down, but Mini GT really, really lets him just go all out. The graphics, the wheels, the bases. This is a really heavy casting. Wow. Some of the most detail I have seen on any 164th engine. Of course, it says Cato House right on the valve covers. Man. This does not disappoint at all. And I know at some convention or show, they just release like a... Uh, one or two other variations of this. And they're selling for, I think, close to $400, like $369 or something crazy. But really, really nice deep weld rims. Really like the look of them. Got the exhaust. All right, I think this is all a plastic piece that's like glued onto the base, the exhaust and uh, what appears to be the frame. Then, of course, you get a really heavy metal base. The mirrors, of course, are rubber, which is kind of cool. Makes it harder to break them, and they still look really cool. Really like how the bed's cut out for the suspension. It's really freaking cool. Or for the rear end, I guess, because it's lowered. Get that on there. Now, it seems like it does suffer from this horrible, horrible thing that happens with the beds on all trucks. Especially the M2s and stuff. It's like they never make it where the bed sits down far enough in the front. And the way the exhaust pokes out, you really don't have any room to lower it down. Should have just raised up the back a little. Still a really awesome paint scheme on it. Just something about the red and the black stripes. And I'm pretty sure that many GTs true 164th and you can see the hot wheels and of course the hot wheels is not a lowered variation but i mean they are like the same exact size as the hot wheel rolls off because it the plastic tires on it just want to roll crazy how similar they are in size so hot wheels normally is not 164th their chevy silverado is really close to 164th you know i sure i have an auto rolled silverado why not why not just get it out i do not have a green light silverado yet and i'm not sure if M2 has one.
I know they've been releasing some new trucks, but let me just try and find a truck over here. Not looking good so far. Boy, oh, yeah. there we go. Now it's a truck and stuff. Thursday, we'll get out one of these auto rolls, compare it. So, none of these are the low rider, but this one's pretty close. And, I mean, yeah. They're about the same exact width. The Mini GT's a little bit longer. Just a hair, not much. I can't put the Hot Wheels up there, but I can line all three up. Very, very similar in size. Now the Mini GT, of course, looks a little different just because it's lowered. It's not a factory stance at all. Looks pretty good sitting up there in the diorama. But I got out these auto rolled. Why not take a look at a couple of them? There's some pretty cool ones in here. So if you guys don't mind still watching, if you're still there, comment down below. Let me know you're still watching at this point. First one's a really cool weathered one. It's a uh, I think these are like a Miho exclusive. Like one came clean, one came dirty. Pretty sure. But they did a really good job weathering this one. All the rust spots on it, everything else. Of course, they forgot to weather the inside of the bed. But. Besides that, they did a really good job. The rust marks on the side. The hood. And uh, these might have been a Miho exclusive too. Almost like the same deal. Get a pink one, but then you get a pink one that's dirty. And it just really looks dirty and dusted over. And we got two more that are really cool factory variations. And these were like a Farmall release or something. Uh, farming tractor or something like that it was some special release i had to get online and order them shout out to champion djk he let me know about these but there was a blue one and a green one both look really freaking awesome And this variation, which I cannot remember at all, but it's a really awesome step side that's weathered. 
I don't know if they had a restored variation of this. They may have. And then the next one, I almost like to say this was like a hitch and toe release, and it came with a Johnny Lightning uh, gasser. But as always, thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite on this Truck and Stuff Thursday. I would have to say my favorite is going to be the Mini GT. Uh, just the detail on the engine, the rims. Uh, just really, really like the look of it. But let me know. let me know down in the comments which one is your pick of the day. I definitely am extremely happy to finally get the Toys R Us exclusive Chevy Silverado. Uh, man, that's definitely my favorite of the day because I've been trying to get that one for eight years now. At least eight years. So, definitely probably that one. I mean, I just missed the release of this in the... Uh, I think the Chevelle SS, the red variation, that one right there, I'm pretty sure that they came out at the same time or really close to the same time. Both of them are Toys R Us exclusives and really hard to get. So, as always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.